Whether or not Casey Anthony actually killed her daughter Kaylee, we may never know. We do know that stories of women killing their own children seem to be in the press more and more. This week, a New Jersey woman allegedly mutilated her son and put the toddler's head in the freezer before taking his own life. Back with me, attorney Mark Eiglarsh, psychoanalyst Bethany Marshall, and forensic psychologist and attorney Brian Russell. Brian, what do you make of this story? Hey, Drew, you know, these kinds of things, these maternal filicides have been around since there have been human beings. They basically fall into three categories, ones that are influenced strongly by mental illness, ones that are influenced strongly by uh, substance intoxication, and a third category where it's influenced strongly by an extreme selfishness and, and a desire to unburden oneself of motherhood. And it's very shocking to people because it's hard for the normal person to understand how a mother could possibly not have enough of a maternal bond with their child to, to be capable of murdering the child and so because it's so scary and shocking and because of the 24-hour media cycle that we have now, I think it's easy for us to overestimate the extent to which it's an epidemic. I don't think it is. But I do think that third category, the ones that are selfishness motivated, are probably creeping up a little bit because I think there's just a general societal trend in the direction, it's a cultural drift in the direction of selfishness. And anytime you have a lot of people drifting in a direction, you're going to have some people getting out in front of it and taking it Brian, to the extreme. Brian, it's, I'm sorry, it's not selfishness. When you say selfishness, that minimizes it. This is utter lack of regard. This is detachment towards the child. Narcissism. And, and, well, not even narcissism. When we distinguish in child abuse, there's a difference between maternal neglect and maternal rejection. Maternal rejection is when you do not want that child. Not only are you not bonded, you have malice towards that child. So when we think of all the women, all three categories you mentioned, they are not bonded with themselves, and therefore they cannot bond with the child. But I do get what Brian's saying. It's sort of selfishness on steroids. It's a way to think about it. It's, it's the ultimate selfishness, right. which is I have so little regard for this child, I'm willing to dispose of it like any other object that I don't regard. I'm going to think, I'm, I'm, I'm going right. to, I want you to do something. Wait, okay. guys, so, I want you, one quick thing. I'm going to go to a 911 call from the Camden Police Department. This is in regards to that case I just talked about with the woman that put the child's head in the freezer. We're going to listen to this call and discuss what we hear here. Take a listen. Somebody just said my baby. Please get here. They just did what? Said my baby. Do they know who it was, ma'am? Yes, it's my ex. It's my boyfriend. You know what? You know, I did it. I'm lying. She goes on to perseverate and say, I did it, I did it, I did it, I did it, repeatedly as though she was in a severely altered state. Some saying PCP did figure in here. And Brian, I bet there are circumstances where two or more of your categories figure in. Absolutely. It sounds like there may have been drug involvement here, but also you can hear in the initial attempt to lie about it, there's consciousness of guilt there. And so ever since Colorado, people have been asking me, how do we identify these people and stop them before they endanger others? And it's very hard, as you know, because it's hard to predict, even among mentally ill people, who's going to get violent and they've got constitutional rights. So we have to balance those with public safety until they endanger somebody. But where I think we fall down, Drew, is when they have done something to get themselves in the system where they've shown us that they have a propensity to endanger others and we've caught and released that's as is right the case here that's right mark this woman had her child taken away from her and then given back are we just not getting it as a society it's so difficult to you know anticipate that someone's going to sever their child's head you know we all if we all had crystal balls we'd know it's very difficult to do that I could tell you that I was hoping that this was like plane crashes and that they don't happen all that frequent, frequently, but the media jumps all over and you think it happens a lot more commonly than it does. Mark, Unfortunately, you know the stats were, were overwhelming. 250 to 300 kids are killed by their parents each year. To me, that's a lot. Mark, I have to and interrupt. Mark, you know, you, and then i got to take a break. Make it quick. Part, you right? can yeah. predict these events, and the number one predictor is lack of empathy towards Always. the child. And when a parent is Always. unempathetic... Everybody in Sometimes the extended family system knows not all unempathetic parents kill, but parents who kill have profound lack of empathy and there are antecedents and predictions. Mark, great